Bed bugs is one of the most frustrating things my patients can come across and a lot of patients, even if they don't have bed bugs, are very fearful they could get them, especially when they travel for business and for pleasure and they're just not sure if they come back with rashes, could this be related to bed bugs or some other trigger or cause? Bed bugs are extremely frustrating and can definitely latch on to when you do travel to hotel. There actually are the range of hotels where you could be potentially exposed because it has very little to do with the quality of the hotel. There are plenty of five-star hotels that have had incidents of bed bugs breaking out in their rooms. It really just boils down to where the source of exposure could have been and who could have brought them in. They latch on to people and items and then once they've taken that hitchhike into the room and that's when the next person can come along and acquire them and transfer them to wherever they're going to next. Why do we even call them bed bugs? Bed bugs are these nocturnal blood feeding insects or ectoparasites. Essentially, they love to feast at night on humans and they need that blood feed to support their life cycle. I've had patients who come in with persistent bite reactions and it is very true that to clinically distinguish between bed bugs versus other types of bug bites can be challenging. Clinically speaking, bed bugs, mosquitoes, chiggers, and fleas can take on similar appearances. They have these discrete erythematous edematous papules, which means these red swollen bumps that can have a central punctate crust or scabs. So there's this classic bug bite reaction that of course can be very, very itchy. So the way we try to distinguish bed bugs from other sources would be the scenario the patient presents in. Mosquitoes tend to bite on exposed areas of our skin. There, it wouldn't be so easy for a mosquito to crawl underneath tight-fitting clothing, for example, and bite you there. It's the body of a mosquito is simply not flat, so it's harder for it to crawl underneath clothing. Fleas also tend to bite on exposed areas, and there's often a source of exposure, whether it be a pet or other animals that we need to consider. Chiggers tend to jump up, bite, and jump off, so we tend to see those bites primarily along the lower legs. Bed bugs, on the other hand, are flat and they can kind of crawl underneath your clothing to make their contact with your skin. And they are so small, they're about the size of a sesame seed when they're an adult. When they're smaller than that, they're almost barely perceptible. Adult bed bugs take on this reddish brown color, but the younger bed bugs tend to be almost invisible, so you can barely even see that they're there. That's what makes this so challenging for my patients to detect. The classic scenario that a patient comes in is they'll say, you know, they've had an exterminator come out and they swear there's no bed bugs there. They look for them, they seek them out, and they simply don't see evidence of them. However, they keep waking up and getting new bites and they know there's got to be something to this. So where do bed bugs tend to even live? Bed bugs can live anywhere in the home. Even though we say bed bugs, they can live on other types of upholstered furniture. They can live in the crevices of baseboards. They can crawl into electrical sockets. They can crawl into the crevices of baseboards and furniture adjacent to your bed as well. They don't tend to go very far. They can crawl up to 100 feet away. However, they actually tend to live within eight feet of their host. So that's why beds tend to be the predominant source to find them. Bed bugs fortunately have not been demonstrated to transmit infectious diseases. So I often have to reinforce to my patients that as frustrating as a scenario might be that they are exposed to bed bugs, we simply have not had evidence of infectious diseases being transmitted by bed bugs. Bed bugs are really attracted to the warmth of humans and carbon dioxide. There are even some bed bug detectors out there that'll use carbon dioxide and warmth to try to draw bed bugs towards the detector so that you can determine if there's evidence of bed bugs present. One of the other frustrating aspects of bed bugs though is that they can actually live without a human host for up to a year, if not even longer. This can be really challenging, say for example, if you're moving into a new apartment or a new dwelling and it's been vacant for some time and the person prior to you may have had bed bugs that were not completely eradicated, sometimes you might find yourself exposed. Because they can travel away from the human body and even up to 100 feet, we'll often find that there are scenarios that arise where in apartment buildings or in hotels, they can transfer between units. So you might feel that you weren't directly exposed, but you might be indirectly exposed by someone you don't even know in your building. Now, bed bugs tend to prefer to come out in the middle of the night, somewhere between 1 to 5 a.m. based on several studies out there. Bed bugs don't have to feed every night, so don't be surprised by good days and bad days. 
this can be really frustrating for a lot of my patients because they'll say, well, I, I don't know that I could be bed bugs because I got some bites on Tuesday and then I didn't get some more until Friday. Don't be fooled by the fact that they just might not have come out to have their blood meal that evening. evening. Another scenario that plays out very often is some of my patients will not believe that bed bugs are a possibility because they don't see other family members manifesting the reaction. Always a frustrating scenario because sometimes it can delay diagnosis because the person just might not be thinking bed bugs given that scenario. Only about 70% of people exposed to bed bugs might actually manifest reactions on their skin as evidence of those bites. Bed bugs look like a typical insect bite reaction and not everyone is sensitive to those bites and you may not see evidence on their skin. There is one article I came across that looked at pediatric patients and coined the term the eyelid sign. In their study, they evaluated patients that were exposed to bed bugs and they found that children in the study seemed to manifest reactions on their eyelids more prevalently amongst bed bugs as opposed to other biting critters. So this is something to keep in mind that if some of your reactions are happening on sensitive locations like eyelids, this may point to the possibility of bed bugs. It's never a slam dunk, but at the same time, it's something to consider. It can be really hard to detect the actual presence of the bed bug, but you may sometimes find evidence that bed bugs have been present. Initially, early on, this will be really hard to detect, especially when the population of bed bugs is so low. But as more bed bugs come out and they really grow in their population, you may see evidence of reddish brown pinhead sized little excrement or evidence of bed bugs on your sheets, on your mattresses, in the surrounding territory of your bed, upholstered items like sofas for example, you may even find evidence of bed bug eggs scattered around. How to manage bed bugs is twofold. The first step is managing your symptoms associated with the bites, but again, that is only symptomatic care. It is not treating the underlying issue, which is the bed bugs themselves. Remember, a bed bug bite is basically a localized hypersensitivity reaction that manifests as itching. So we can manage that locally by cooling the skin down, using anti-itch remedies, Permoxine, hydrocortisone, antihistamine, but that is only symptomatic care. Ultimately, to get to the bottom of this, we need to treat the source of the bed bugs that's causing these reactions in your skin. Now, addressing bed bugs is a multi-pronged approach, and remember that you need to consider the direct manual removal of bed bugs and evidence of them, along with the possibility or need for chemical intervention. Let's focus on the direct removal of bed bugs that you can do on your own before you actually draw in professional help. Addressing the actual population of bed bugs in your environment really does help. And actually I had patients that do far better with these methods and sometimes the chemical intervention because if you're hearing on the news quite a bit about bed bug outbreaks, part of the challenge is that a lot of bed bugs have become resistant to some of the chemical interventions that are out there. So we do have to remember and fall back on the fact that some of these methods of direct manual removal or depopulating this growth of bed bugs does work. First things first, remember that bed bugs tend to linger in areas of clutter. There are studies that have demonstrated that bed bugs tend to favor soiled clothing and clothing with an odor. So if there are areas where you've had laundry accumulating, clutter accumulating, you want to clear out these areas. Make it so that the bed bugs have less locations that they can linger or persist and hide in. Now, over the years of managing so many patients with bed bugs and dealing with so much frustration that my patients manage, and then recognizing these practical challenges of just going home with a diagnosis like bed bugs and thinking, where do I even begin? I've really laid out a step-by-step -step approach that takes into consideration all the little challenges that my patients have come across and the calls that I've gotten to say, what do I do next or how do I approach this? The first step I tend to tell patients is don't go home and throw out your mattress immediately. Don't do that and get a new mattress right away because you don't want to take a chance of introducing new furniture into a scenario where there's already bed bugs. First, get rid of the bed bugs and then you can think about the other things you can do. So first things first. So you get home and you find out you've got bed bugs. So what you do is you take the bedding off of your bed and you throw in the laundry machine. You want anything that can be anything that can be laundered in that vicinity, throw it in the laundry machine and wash it. 
Remove any clutter out in and around the bed, especially within about eight feet of the bed, and clear all of those areas out. Vacuum the area thoroughly, vacuum the mattress, wipe down your furniture. I tend to prefer the Clorox Free and Clear compostable wipes. One, they're compostable, but two, they also don't have bleach in them, so they're safe to use on many surfaces. Wipe between the crevices of furniture, wipe between the crevices of the bed frame, wipe down all those areas along the windowsills, the baseboards, vacuum the area. When you vacuum, remember that when the bag is full or the canister is full, take it, empty it, seal the bag off and throw it away immediately so that you don't take a chance of reinfesting the area with bed bugs from the bag. Vacuum the mattress, vacuum the carpets, vacuum the upholstery. Any clothing that you're currently wearing, you should launder. Any clothing that you've worn recently is not a bad idea to launder as well if the care instructions of the clothing permit you to do so. If you have items that you can't launder or a volume of clothing that you're dealing with or things in your linen closet, consider bagging things, tying off the bags and sticking them in an area that you can address three to six months later only because if you can bag these garments or these items for a period of about six months, although there's no hard and fast rules that specify when bed bugs would die off, the period of time that they're thought to be able to survive in a bagged environment is around three to six months. So just to be on the safe side, items that you can do without for a period of six months, please go ahead and bag them tie them off and seal it up so that they can't get out of there. If you do have items that you need to toss out, please don't just stick them out on the curb. There are cases or incidents of bed bugs spreading in communities when somebody takes a bed bug infested item and throws it out onto the curb. We don't want to take a chance of this becoming a larger issue for your environment around you. If you do have a furniture item that is so infested that you need to get rid of it, then please tear it down, take it apart, spray paint on it, bed bug infested, so anyone that sees it knows that this item is bed bug infested, and then try to bag or seal off those areas that are infested with bed bugs, let's say saran wrap or plaster wrap or other items, just to avoid the chances of anyone else being exposed to those bed bugs. If you have any cracks in the walls and the baseboards, seal these off with caulk if you are able to, just to avoid the chances of getting a reinfestation with bed bugs that might be hiding or living in those crevices. Please do not take items from one room into the next because you're just moving bed bugs around. Try to focus on wiping, cleaning, vacuuming, and bagging as opposed to moving things around and shifting the point of contact to different areas of your home. Before you go out and throw out your mattress and we're trying to focus on ensuring that the bed bugs have been removed, First, start off by sealing off your mattress in your pillows and bed bug protectors. They have these bags that you can get from Target and other stores. They have these bags that you can slip your mattress into and zip them up that are used for bed bugs as well as dust mites. And that way you can still use the item until you are sure that you are ready to either get rid of it and replace it with a new one once you're sure that the bed bug infestation is under better control or you can consider keeping it if it does seem to survive that period of time without being a significant infestation. There are a variety of bed bug detectors and traps out there. Some of them use carbon dioxide and warmth to try to attract bed bugs to them just so that you can see if there's evidence present. Some of them use a sticky adhesive that you can place in different portions of your home just to see if you can check to see if bed bugs have actually been attracted to those areas. This does give you an ability to kind of monitor your progress for success. Also using your own skin symptoms, meaning if you're still getting bites, then we know there's a possibility that there could be some bugs still around. Chemical treatment of bed bugs may be necessary in terms of either hiring an exterminator, or treating some areas on your own. This is something I tend to say I would prefer that you do rely on professional help for. There's a lot of resistance to a lot of our traditional chemical treatments for bed bugs, and trained professionals are well aware of these challenges and will be able to use the right products to treat the area. 
just remember though, I mean, as a mom and, you know, I'm a dermatologist, but I'm also a mom of three kids and two cats that to actually expose your environment to the chemicals that are in some of these products can be really, it can be kind of scary or frustrating to consider exposing an environment to chemicals of this nature, not knowing the impact and safety that's there. So there are toxicities associated with them. So it's always better to do this in professional hands. There are some natural bed bug repellents out there that use essential oils that you could consider too. The most important first step when you consider the possibility that you may be exposed to bed bugs is to talk to your dermatologist. This way you can actually make sure that you address this in the right way without going overboard or making some bad decisions along the way. Even though there's a lot of resources out there, a lot of sites that you can look at, not a lot of them are very comprehensive or practical to address the really specific questions that patients start to ask me. They'll often get into the nitty gritty details of, you know, when do I throw out my mattress? When do I throw out this? When do I do that? You really wanna make sure that you understand the scenario and what you're exposed to, so that you don't take a chance of going overboard bringing new furniture in just to find out that the new furniture is now infested with bed bugs because it wasn't done in the right sequence of events. Also remember that there are various states and locales that do have rules that apply to people that are renters that are supposed to allow you access to a professional exterminator given certain circumstances. Always take a moment to review your rights in your area just so that you can see if you can have access to a professional to help you through this difficult time.